Good morning. Welcome to Lexington Park Baptist Church. We're glad you've come here to join us on a Sunday morning. Would you please stand and join us as we start out worship with House of the Lord. Shout that praise out for God. Amen. Amen. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father God, we just love you and we praise you and we thank you for this glorious day you've given us. Lord, we thank you that we can praise your name today and exalt you high in this place. May we know that as the song just reminded us, there's joy in the house of the Lord today and that surely you're in this place. We thank you for your presence, God, now in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. So... It's Veterans Day for us to celebrate. I know it's not the actual day. So we want to honor all who have served. We're going to do that in a little bit. But the word of the Lord says, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but one of power, one of love, and one of sound judgment. And may we thank today all those who have served. When we get to that time, we're going to recognize everyone in the branches of service. And uh, we'll always remember, I think Veterans Day reminds me of Jesus, that he gave everything. Some of us are called and we sacrifice and some of us have to give the ultimate cost, but Jesus literally gave everything so that we could have life. Can we hear it for Jesus before we do anything else? Amen. 
Thank you, Lord Jesus. So we have a few announcements today. Actually, if you got your communicator, this front page is everything that's going on actually this week. So I want to go over this and make sure everybody's plugged in. Uh, where's my pilgrim and my Indian? All right, pilgrim lady, come on, stand up. She's come from the Mayflower today to be with us. And Susquehanna, or who, whatever, what's your name? Poconatus. She's a Poconatus. And so from the Mayflower and all the way down from Massachusetts, they've joined us today to promote our Thanksgiving meal. So I want to encourage you. There are tickets out there. It is this Wednesday at 5 p.m. So please pick up your tickets from whatever her name is and Miss Mayflower Lady. And they're going to be out there. Thank you, too, for being such a good sport. Um, so anyway, you two are having way too much fun for doing this. So uh, please come out and be a part of that. Also, the arrangements, just know that next Monday, not this Monday, but next will be Doreen's memorial service. Uh, calling hours are 3 to 5, and 5 to 6 will be the service, and then a potluck dish to follow the, wor the worship service. So please uh, make plans now if you can. Uh, shoebox Sunday is today. We're going to bless the shoeboxes, and this week we'll be taking them. Carol, you're going to have to get up here when I get to the blessing, so make your way up here at greeting time. And uh, sin relief. Be praying for Israel. A lot going on over there. And so I just got to hang out this weekend uh, with some people from the Sin Relief team from Atlanta. And that is the big focus. So is getting care in there to Israel and even trying to get stuff in to recover in, in Gaza when they let them in. All right. So right now it's, it's dealing with Israel and getting funding there, helping the missionaries that are over there serve and minister. So if you want to help with sin relief, the Israel-Gaza war, we're taking up funds all month long. So please be a part of that. Uh, game night is November 18th. So um, Barrett, back there, see Barrett. So there's a lot going on, but we decided to go ahead and launch it this week anyway, even if Barrett's playing games by himself. I don't know how you play Uno by yourself, but he'll figure it out, all right? So if you want to come and, and do that, bring some finger foods to share or snacks and come on out for a game night here. It'll, you go down underneath the stairwell out there and you go into the fellowship hall. That's where game night will be. Also, Chipotle fundraiser for the preschool. So if you want to support that, uh, who doesn't like Chipotle? Come on, man. So go buy Chipotle uh, on November 13th and be a part of that. Also, uh, I'm supposed to tell that youth tonight is at the McCombs house. So if you want to be there, it's a game night at the McCombs house. Bring, everybody bring Uno if you have it and bring a game that you would like to play for the kids. And I think he, she divvied it out. Who's bringing? The girls, I think, are bringing the drinks and the guys are bringing the snacks. Or if I got it wrong, just bring something and we'll have a good time. That'll be at my house tonight. Um, for the youth group and bla Blacklight Dodgeball, which, uh, sorry adults, you cannot do participate in that, but that will be November 18th. And, and then decorating the church is going to be November 26th. Whew, a lot going on. So put that on your calendars, be a part. And Sandy wants to promote the tea. Go ahead. It's just a reminder, ladies, that uh, we are starting signups for our Christmas tea, which is December 2nd. I see a lot of people that I haven't had a chance to sit down and chat with ever or in a long while. So this is just a really great opportunity to um, slow down and start the Christmas season with an opportunity to eat and fellowship. Um, so I invite you to um, join us for that. And so look for Poconatus or myself in the foyer after church um, and we'll have iPads and we'll help you sign up for that. So thanks. Thank you. All right, let's stand and greet one another. Tell somebody you're glad to see them here today.
Everybody, please return to your seats. All right, as you return to your seats, again, I want to welcome everybody here to Lexington Park Baptist Church. If you are online, please sign in. Let us know you're with us. Home folk, please fill this card out. Let us know you're with us as well. And if you have anything to communicate, you can put that in the notes section on the back, any prayer requests or anything. If you're new today, there's a gift bag out there in the foyer on your way out. Please pick one of those up. We'd love to bless you. And uh, again, there's a black box in the foyer. You can put that in there. So at, at the end of service, we would appreciate you taking the time to fill that out. All right, so we want to do our missionary moment, and then we're going to honor our veterans. So uh, Jared and Jennifer Huntley uh, from Texas. Anybody like Texas? Wow. Anybody like Maryland? All right, all right, all right. That's what I like to hear. Okay. Those Texas people got quiet real quick. All right. Anyway, we're praying for God to connect the Huntlings to just the right people to help them grow as they start a new church plant. So part of our mission work goes to planting new churches in areas where the ratio of people to churches is low and where we believe that the, the people groups can be reached with the gospel of Jesus Christ. And so there are church plants going on around the world. If you didn't know, there are hundreds of churches that close their door every day in America. And for every church plant that starts, only three successfully make it. So the more churches we plant, uh, that doesn't mean they're all going to succeed. But we've got to flip this around because what happened is America's becoming a churchless society, believe it or not. And so we want to plant more churches to reach more people. And where maybe existing churches have failed and have died and declined and shut their doors, maybe new churches can be birthed. And so that's kind of the vision of the convention. So a lot of our dollars go uh, to church planting and people like this. They go through NAM and go through a process, and then they go out and plant churches. So let's pray for the hunt lease, but also think of all the other hundreds and even thousands of church plants that are going on right now. And may we, may we uh, bless them with our prayers. All right, before we get to veterans today, I have, I have a special greeting. So Tom Stoll is going to be here next week, along with Fred Cottle. And you may not know who they are. I'll introduce them to you. But uh, they're kind of like my bosses. So uh, the PBA is Fred Cottle, and then the BCMD director is uh, Tom Stoll. So on behalf of them, I have some gifts to give to you from the annual convention because none of you go with me. But all of you are welcome to go if you would like to. And it is a great, Sean, that is a great time of worship. It is, it is awesome. And let me tell you what, if you see how they run their business meetings and worship and everything, it is like, it is the most divine business meeting I've ever attended in my entire life. It is such a great time to hang out, and there's expo. You go around and meet all the people, and it's just an amazing time. But I have some gifts from NAM and IMB, and I also have some helpers. I have Randy Jackson, and I have Robert, if you can stand in the aisles. So here's what we're going to do. We have some shirts to pass out. Now, I have told these guys they're not supposed to ding them at your head, all right? They're supposed to be throwing these underhand, but I have a lot of gifts. If the size does not fit you, please share it with somebody that it does. Okay, so let's just have a little fun. I don't get to do this very often, but I'm going to start with this one right here. Oh, man, you robbed it. All right, start passing them out. All right. There you go. Do you all not want shirts? Who doesn't like shirts? Come on. Woo, there we go. Let me see where I can go one over here. Yeah, I'll try, Jeremiah. Oh, there you go. One more. All right, if it does, sorry, I got, I got an empty box for you. <laughs> oh, okay. So anyway, with that, I just, if, if it doesn't fit, the size is on the thing. If that doesn't, try to trade and change or exchange with somebody or give it to somebody you think that shirt will fit. So anyway, God bless you. That's from our convention to you. And I just want to thank you. That's either from Sin Relief or from North American Mission Board. Uh, and so we just wanted to bless you with a few t-shirts. Trust me, I would have got more. Sean Nutter would tell you, I was going back every time to the table. I said, do you have more? They're like, please keep taking some. I kept walking out with piles of them and think, this is like, I'm going Christmas shopping for my church right now. Yes, had a great time. So with that, um, I have my army bow tie. I know a couple of you all thought, man, that, that, that was the wrong color. I did find a, a, a cool mug that says, you know, um, uh, everybody says go army because you never played navy growing up. But here's the deal. Hey, the Navy, the Army, the Air Force, the Marines, hurrah, all right, and the Coast Guard, and now, what's that thing called? Space, there you go, Space Force. 
So if you are in any of those and you have served either currently or in the past, will you come up here and join me around the preschool made a little hands uh, flag? Come on up here with me down here and stand with me. Stand up tall. Uh, the Marines, so what do y'all, y'all just move for the proud and, ugh. <laughs> Come on around, come on in, you guys, get it tight. All right. Come on, come on in, come on, get closer, come on, come on, get closer, even if you're tall. Make room for everybody, half the church, praise God. All right, you ready? If you are Navy, raise your hand. Hoorah, let's hear it. If you're Coast Guard, raise your hand. If you're Space Force, raise your hand. I just want to get those out of the way, all right? Yeah, all right, all right. If you are Army, raise your hand. Who did I forget? If you're Air Force, raise your hand. Woo! All right. The proud, the few. Let's hear it from the Marines. So let's, let's bless all these veterans. I want to thank everybody for their service and what they gave. If you're currently serving, still on active duty or in the reserve, would you raise your hand? We want to thank you all. All right, let's pray. Lord, we just thank you for everyone. We thank you for all these veterans. We thank you for all that are currently serving us. Lord, we ask you to protect those that are actually literally serving us right now in harm's way. And Lord, we thank you for everyone and the sacrifices they made and the families that, that made, uh, made a way for each one that's represented up here. We thank you for each family. We thank you for the service they gave to our nation, Lord, and we're grateful to be a part of the United States of America. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Let's hear it back for the veterans again. God bless you all. Brian Brain, make your way up here, brother. You can just low crawl, man. No, no, come on up, brother. Y'all are moving a lot slower than I bet you did in your 20s, you all. Yeah, happy birthday, Marines. You got it, brother. Morning, church. It's good to be back. Um, first and foremost, I just want to say thank you all for your prayers and your concerns for my health. Um, diabetes, you know, it was uh, a scary time for me, but, you know, I, I did get ahead of it. Thanks for your help and your support. Um, and uh, and that, just, that just reminds me just how much, you know, I love this church. <laughs> Okay, so um, so this morning I'm going to be reading uh, Colossians chapter 1, uh, verse 24 through 29. Now I rejoice in my suffering for you, and I am completing in my flesh what is lacking in Christ's affliction for his body, that is, the church. I have become its servant according to God's commission that was given to me for you to make the word of God fully known, the mystery hidden for ages and generations, but now revealed to his saints. God wanted to make known among the Gentiles the glorious wealth of his mystery, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. We proclaim him, warning and teaching everyone with all wisdom so that we may present everyone mature in Christ. I labor for this, striving with his strength that works powerfully in me. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this day. I thank you for 
getting us up this morning. I thank you for getting us up in the right frame of mind. I thank you for protecting us and keeping us safe as we travel to wherever we go, Father, especially to this building, Father. I thank you for this body that's that's in this place right now, Father. I thank you for the support that we give one another. I thank you for the love that we share with one another. I thank you for all of the veterans that laid their life down on the line for our protection and our liberties and what we stand for this great nation. I thank you for your mercy that follows us everywhere we go, Father. I thank you for the love for those that we've uh, recently lost, Father. I thank you for everything that you provide for us. In the midst of our grief and our suffering, there's love and there's protection and there's mercy and there's always a reminder that you're always there, whether it's life or death. You're always there and you're always reminding us how much you love us, Father. I thank you for Jesus. I thank you for the blood. I thank you for everything. I can't stop thanking you because of everything that you provided for us, Father. And I say this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, would you please stand and join us as we continue worship?
Father, we just thank you that we've had this moment where we can praise you and worship you. And Lord, we just pray that as you have inhabited the praise of your people, that this has been pleasing aroma to your throne. Lord, we thank you for your grace and your mercy and your love. Continue to move amongst your people today. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. By the way, I want to, as uh, Dan comes up for the offertory, um, I just wanted to say, I, I was over here, kept my my eyes closed and listened more than I sang today, I'm grateful we have a singing church. And I want you to know, as I closed my eyes, I could just hear all your voices, and it was just beautiful. I can imagine what that sounds like to God. So I just want to thank you all for singing praises to the Lord. Uh, as we go to the time of giving, 
Um, I want to remind us we have our giving boxes up front and we have the black box in the foyer. Please continue. Thank you for your generosity as always. And you can give that way. You can also give online and you can also mail in your checks uh, that way too. So again, thank you for being a giving church. I appreciate you that for that too. Dan? Uh, the scripture passage today for the offertory scripture is Nehemiah 10, uh, verses 35 through 39. We will bring the first fruits of our land and of every fruit tree to the Lord's house year by year. We will also bring the firstborn of our sons and our livestock as prescribed by the law and will bring the firstborn of our herds and flocks to the house of our God, to the priest who serve in our God's house. We will bring a loaf from our first batch of dough to the priest at the storerooms of the house of our God. We will also bring the first fruits of our grain offerings of every fruit tree and of the new wine and fresh oil. A tenth of our land's produce belongs to the Levites, for the Levites are to collect the one-tenth offering in all our agricultural towns. A priest from Aaron's descendants is to accompany the Levites when they collect the tenth and the Levites are to take the tenth of this offering to the storerooms of the treasury in the house of our God. For the Israelites and the Levites are to bring the contributions of grain, new wine, and fresh oil to the storerooms, where the articles of the sanctuary are kept and where the priests who minister are, along with the gatekeepers and singers. We will not neglect the house of our God. So I want to ask Carol, come on up here with me. As part of our, our givings, you got to make your way through all that maze there. Yeah, yeah. As part of uh, our giving, I want to thank Carol for leading for two, three years now. Well, we're going to make it, we're prophetic. We're going to make it three, four, five, yes. <laughs> so come on, man. So we appreciate you. Thank you for all the hard work and organizing things. Uh, and we're, we're learning each year and growing and doing different things. I appreciate it. And it, it, is, it is awesome. So uh, it's just, you all may not be able to see it, but you can probably see the boxes. It is amazing to see both sides full. And then we got our Christmas gift up here. And that's because of you. And that's not counting the ones that gave online. I know several gave online. So Carol, I'm going to ask you to come over here with me. Oh, no, I'm not going to ask you to pray in public yet. You. You're welcome. <laughs> uh, we're going to lay our hands on these boxes. And listen, these, these boxes are going to go around the world. Uh, we don't know what region they'll go to. They'll leave from here on um, this week. Chris, thank you, Chris. Uh, Chris will help Carol. And we'll take these to Pax uh, River uh, Presbyterian Church, right? The, or the Pax pa Pres, right? One of them, all right. And we'll drop them off at that assembly area, and then they'll leave there, and they'll make their way to Baltimore. In Baltimore, they have a major assembly area where they pack them into regions. They go through each box. Um, and so if you put money in here to go shipping, they take the money out. They make sure there's nothing inappropriate in here. Like if it's going to a war region, they probably won't want you to have a tank in there. All right? So that kind of stuff. I know you guys are like, oh, man, I thought I could do that. But, uh, you know, there's different things that they make sure it's going to the appropriate place. And then they'll send it out around the world. It's really an amazing thing. If you've never seen it in operation, if you ever want to one year, I would contact Samaritan's person, go serve a day up there. They usually get booked, though, way early. So probably if you want to get a slot now, you won't get one. But uh, if you've never done that, it's an amazing thing to see. So I'm grateful for the, the Graham family and Franklin Graham for the vision of a Samaritan's Purse. And I'm grateful for these boxes that will go around the world. So if you want to join me in praying, if you could close your eyes and join me as we pray over these boxes. Lord Jesus, we're grateful uh, that we can, we're so blessed, so stinking blessed, God. We have so much in abundance. And Lord, so many people around the world have nothing. And so, Lord, these little gifts from Dollar General and wherever else we, we got these things or people I know handmade stuff to, Lord, may they go and fill a child's heart with such joy. May they know that they're loved practically. But, Lord, as the gospel goes with each of these boxes, as a member of the Good Samaritan team will go into these villages where these boxes are sent out, I pray that families... And I pray that young boys and girls will open their hearts to the gospel of Jesus Christ because of a shoebox. Lord, how you can use something so small to do something big. I pray that these boxes impact eternity more than they impact the here and now on this earth. Lord, may these boxes get to where they need to go. May you give them safe passage and work with governments that are hostile to this cause. 
and make a way to get these boxes to boys and girls that, that need to be loved on and need to know that there's something bigger than themselves and whatever part they're in, that there is something that's out of this world and his name is Jesus. May they hear that name as these boxes go to their villages and where they live and may hearts be open, I pray in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, amen. Thank you, Carol. God bless. Uh, the next song that we're ringing is um, a spiritual song, and it's called I Want Jesus to Walk With Me, and it's a really good reminder that whether we're on the mountaintop or in the valley with trials, that we want Jesus right there before. Jesus to walk with me. 
Good job, handbell choir. Sounded good to me. I don't know how it sounded to everybody else. All right, let's get our Bibles, raise the word of God high. Say this with me. This is my Bible, God's holy word. I'll make it a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path and hide his words in my heart that I might not sin against God. Amen, and God bless you guys. So today we're gonna continue on this unseen journey as today uh, you should have put the pieces of paper in your Bible and we're gonna be talking about the angelic encounters. So we have angelic encounters. So today we're looking at the unseen realm and how angels connect with us in our life. So whether you know it or not, Touched by Angels was not too far off if you remember that show. Every single one of you, if you are a believer in Jesus Christ, you don't have a guardian angel, you have guardian angels. We're gonna talk about that today. Whether you see them or not, whether you believe them or not, they're there. And they're watching over all of those that will come to know salvation of Jesus Christ. Also, they're there to carry out God's bidding. And so I wanna talk about the role that angels will play in end times, the role that angels play in our lives now, and how we should kinda of see that and understand that. Now most of us are gonna say, we believe in Jesus. I hope. Have you ever seen him? No. You believe in the Holy Spirit? Oh man, Baptist got a little excited about the Holy Spirit, man, look out. You never seen him either. Now you see the evidence of it, and the Bible describes it like you see like trees moving, Jesus described it, you see the wind and the evidence of the wind. You don't see the wind, but you see the evidence of it. And so sometimes we see the evidence of Jesus in us, and if you, one of the greatest compliments is when people come to, to me, or to you it should be, and they say, man, I see Jesus in you. I, how, what you did, or how you acted, or, or the things that you said, I, I see Christ in your life. Or you can see the evidence of the Holy Spirit doing things that are beyond us and you're like, that has to be God. In those moments, we need to understand God's moving, but we also have to understand that sometimes angelic beings are doing God's bidding. Yes, God is with us always, but the angelic beings are also doing his bidding. We don't know how many angels there are. The Bible never tells us there are too many to count. Right, so we just get examples of these multitudes of heavenly hosts that come at us and we believe the stories of Christmas and we're gonna talk about that at Christmas time. All these angels and we believe in these things but we haven't seen them and then we get to real life and we think, well, that's just the Bible. Or that was back then. Have the angels stopped to exist? No. If Jesus confronted demons, are demons still real? We talked about this last week. I hope you understand. Yes, they're still, they're still active. Guess what? So are the angels, and the angels outnumber the demons. All right? Lucifer was able to deceive a third of heaven, but not all of heaven. That means two-thirds of the angels, how many that are, they're still there combating on our behalf. They're still there doing what God has always called them to do, and we're going to talk about what some of those things are. So understanding the encounters in the spiritual realm I believe are important to our faith. I think so much, so many times we live our faith temporally. It's, we go to church. No, you are the church. Uh, by the way, that's a t-shirt moment right there. You are the church. Do you know that the greatest institution, if you want to call it that on the face of the earth, is the church? It's the only one that has an eternal impact. It's the only one Organizations can do great things. Listen, Samaritan's Purse, if it's of any worth, it's because of the eternal impact shoeboxes will make, not the temporal impact that it will have on a person's life. You come to church not to sit on the pew because they're not very comfortable. Amen. Hey, uh, all right, yeah. <laughs> you know, you, 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 you come to church because it should say, today something eternal is gonna happen in my life. You may already be saved, but something God's gonna do to make me more like what he's called me to be. I'm gonna understand more about Jesus today. I'm gonna to understand more about the word of God. I'm gonna be able to take this and apply it to my life and live differently this week than I did the week before. If you're on a Christian journey, that should be happening every week. You should start to see the things where you mess up and say, God, I don't want that misstep anymore in my life. I wanna walk with you like the song we just sang with Shalnetta. So understanding these encounters, we may not realize they're happening, but they're all around us. I believe this, and sometimes we don't talk about it. Baptist churches, I've had, listen, Ken Drake came up to me. Ken Drake, I'm not gonna say how old you are, but you're, you, you've lived a good long life, right? And you have never heard a sermon on these topics, have you? One or two, and how many years? 
All right, we'll stop right there. You can know, listen, this is our Abraham, amen? Yeah, he, he, is an, he has been around, I know he knows the Lord, and he came up and said, I've never heard it like this, like all this, the depth of what we're going into, probably most of you have not had sermons like that. You get touched by it, or you get touched by an angel, did you get that, it was a joke anyway. You know, you, you have a little dabble here, you read it in a devotional, but unless you read like a book like by Billy Graham on angels or something like that and just focus in on it, very few of us have studied in depth the spirit realm. So I wanna encourage us, uh, the world should not, listen, those people that are new age, they should not beat us on this. We should be more spiritually attuned than any new age, which is really attuned to what? Demons. We should be in tune to the kingdom of God. We should be in tune to the kingdom of heaven. We should be in tune to the angelic beings and their presence and what God wants to carry out. We should be living a life that can discern these things in the temporal. We can see the unseen in the seen. That's why I really want you to start getting spirit eyes. How can I see? Listen, when somebody starts doing something stupid, nobody's ever done that, right? It could be sin, flesh, but it could also be influences and powers of darkness that are moving to cause division, to cause factions, to cause problems, to cause your marriage to be in ruins. It's that practical, it's that real. I believe that we can start to apply it to our lives and see change. I hope at least that you'll be able to do that. The first thing I wanna do before we do anything is you are indwelled by the Holy Spirit if you're a Christian. So listen, these angels have nothing over you, they have nothing over you because you've got the Holy Spirit. Demons have nothing over you because you have the Holy Spirit. I want you to know where our hope comes from is God. Who do we trust? God. Where's our faith? In God, in the Lord Jesus, and he promised to send the Holy Spirit. Does Jesus lie? No. So that means if he says, my spirit, God's spirit, the Holy Spirit is in all my believers indwelling you, then guess who's in you? The Holy Spirit, God is in you. I know that freaks us out, right? But he's there. Listen, I hate to tell you this. When you look in the mirror, he's there. As you age and you have aches and pains you never knew you had before, he's there. When you have peaks and valleys in your life, he's there. He's literally right there with you. We just need to acknowledge him. We need to see him at work. We need to know he, he is there with us. So as we talk about these angelic can, uh, encounters, I want you to look at these, these verses I've given you. Some of them I need to explain because some of them say, whenever you see angel of the Lord versus the angel of the Lord, there's a distinction. So I listed them in here. You're gonna need to take notes because there's a big difference. If you ever hear the angel of the Lord, that is different than God just sending an angel of the Lord. Who knew that? A few of you, most of you don't. You read the Old Testament and you're gonna read the angel of the Lord shows up and you're gonna say, well, who is that angel? I'm gonna tell you today in just a minute. So who are these angels? First of all, angels are messengers. The Bible describes them as messengers. Angels are warriors. They battle on our behalf and for God's kingdom. Angels are ministers. They minister and serve us. Angels are harvesters and angels are worshipers. Now what do you mean by harvesters? In the end time, God has given this great privilege to the angels. They will grab the elect from all corners of the earth for the Lord Jesus Christ. When he, if we're here and he comes back, we're gonna see angelic presences like we've never seen before. Glory to God, amen? I hope I get to see that. Whether I get to experience it or I'm watching it, that is gonna be cool, right? So I get to see all these angels do their thing. Angels have always done those things that I just described, so I'm gonna give them to you again. Messengers, ministers, warriors, harvesters, worshipers. They do all of those things and they do them well. And they're called to do those things as examples to us and around us and they're constantly doing that in the spirit realm. So angels are watching over us, literally, they're among us. They're right here. God's spirit is here, God's spirit's in all of us and God's spirit and presence can move in the atmosphere here. But the angelic beings are here too. Because guess what? If you've been assigned at least plural, I'm gonna get to in a minute, at least two angels assigned to everyone that will ever be saved, this room is filled with angelic beings. Wow! Where are they sitting? I don't know. They're here. They're battling for our souls. They're battling for us. They're worshiping God on our behalf. They are there for our good even to minister to us to watch over us. Guess what, they're in our homes. They're in our lives. 
They're in our marriages. They're in our families. They're in our parenting. They're in our workplaces. They're in our schools. They're in government. They're in nations. They're in civilizations and they're in the world. And guess what? They're in this church. They're everywhere. Now, are they to be worshiped? No. They teach us how to worship. They're not to be worshiped. All right? They're not to be prayed to. They're not to be glorified in that way. They're never to steal any glory from God. Anytime an angelic being would try to steal the glory of God, who would that be? That would be Satan in demonic presence. An angel will never steal God's glory. It belongs to him and him alone. So that's where I want to get to this angel of the Lord. If you go look in the Old Testament, you'll hear like with Moses and the burning bush, you've got Joshua, you've got Gideon, you've got the the donkey when the angel of the Lord shows up, and you hear the angel of the Lord, and he speaks as he is the Lord. Would an angel ever speak as the Lord? No. Would an angel ever allow Gideon or another person to worship him? No. So who is this? When you see the angel of the Lord, who is this? Most of us have never been taught what I'm gonna teach you right now because it just flies over our head and we go, oh, it's just an angel. No, it was the pre-incarnate Christ. Now look, you may think, what, how, what, what? I'm telling you, any conservative scholar would tell you that most of us believe, and I believe wholeheartedly, that whenever you see those encounters, that's Jesus before he took on flesh. Jesus has always been because he's God. The Holy Spirit's always been because he's God. The Father's always been because what? He, he's God, right? The triune God, right? Jesus has not always been in the flesh. He did not take flesh until we study the Christmas story. When the Holy Spirit placed that in Mary's womb, he never knew flesh. He still existed, and so he would come to us, and the Bible describes it. Remember, they don't, they don't have this all figured out. They're just watching this angelic looking being, which is Jesus, come and speak because he's God and they give him the title, the angel of the Lord. Trust me, go look at it, go read it, go look at those examples. Anytime the angel of the Lord, not an angel of the Lord, and they come and speak as if they were the Lord, I believe that's speaking to Jesus. All right, so whenever you see that, don't confuse that with normal angelic beings or wonder why is Gideon worshiping this dude or why would Joshua respond the way he did or why would Moses, I believe that in the Holy, you know, it could have been the Holy Spirit, but most people believe in the burning bush. I believe that was Jesus speaking, I am. What does Jesus say when he's on earth? I am, I am the bread, I am the, I am the life, I am the resurrection. All those I am statements referring that Jesus saying, I'm God, I'm God. So this pre-incarnate Christ, Jesus has always been, and Jesus' role is to connect with us, you all. So when we do that, Holy Spirit's to indwell us and to guide us and convict us and challenge us and teach us. Jesus was there to connect with us, and the Father remains as that Father. He's our Papa. He's our, he's our Abba Father. He's our, he's our Daddy. He's the God that we can turn to and, and intimately know. So moving beyond that, I want us to talk about two of the main, there's three angels listed by name. So whenever you read books and they start giving angels names, be careful. They also name demons by name, be careful, all right? Um, I don't know where they're getting that stuff from, but I will tell you this, there's three. There's Lucifer, there's Michael, and there's Gabriel. We have those three predominantly. Who's Lucifer? Satan, he's the devil himself. So he's a fallen angel. He was an archangel. He was a high angel of God. So is Michael and Gabriel. All right, and they're given by name. Now, other angels and angel of the Lord or angels or heavenly hosts will be mentioned, but they're not given names. But in this case, we have Michael and we have Gabriel. And I want to talk about to them briefly here because Gabriel was different. Gabriel was a messenger angel from on high and Michael is a warrior angel. And Michael has legions of angels assigned to him the battle on your behalf. He has angels assigned that warrior for us. So you're like, where do you get that? Thank you, I'm gonna show you right now, okay? So let's first of all, Gabriel, you got it, right? Hey, I'm Gabriel, who are you? You know, he came to Mary, right? We don't know for sure because it doesn't mention it, but it probably makes sense that it's the same angel that came to Joseph, all right? He could have been one of the angels that was at the tomb, most likely, all right? That's his role. He played significant role in messaging Jesus, but specifically in Luke 119, It says, the angel answered him, I am Gabriel who stands in the presence of God and I was sent to speak to you and to tell you this good news. Gabriel is the one who stands in the presence of God constantly. And whenever God tells him to speak, 
he goes and delivers that message. He may be the one that's in charge of sending the angelic host that came down that spoke the good news, because if he's the one that speaks the good news, it makes sense he's the one in charge of the messaging angels. We're gonna learn here in a, middle, a minute now when we move to Micah in Jude chapter one, verse nine. It says, yet when Michael the archangel was disputing with the devil in an argument about Moses' body, he did not dare utter slanderous condemnation against him, but he said, the Lord rebuke you. So what's Michael doing here? He's fighting with the devil. All right, we, and we're gonna go back to that one, but I want to move on to Revelation uh, right now on, on the screen. Revelation 12, seven. Then a war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. The dragon's the devil. And the dragon and his angels also fought back. So we have Michael that's warring in, in heaven. This goes back to the fall. So he's battling with Satan. Moses never got to go to the promised land. I hope all of y'all knew that. All right, he died. And supposedly in Jude, we get this encounter where it says the devil was fighting over Moses' body with Michael. All right, I don't know why. You can ask God that later on, all right? But whatever reason they're battling, Moses was a deliverer. And so for whatever reason, the devil wanted his body. And, and Michael came to defend the body of Moses, and he didn't use his own authority, but he rebuked Satan by whose authority? God's, by the Lord. May the Lord rebuke you. In other words, he cast the devil out from his presence, and most likely what this would mean is that Michael protected the body of Moses, all right? So when you look at those things, there's other texts, but those are clear encounters where Gabriel's a messenger and Michael is a warrior. They're given by name. They would be considered archangels, and they would be what's equivalent to Lucifer. So God is not equal to, to the devil. The devil does not equal God. There's none but God, amen? But when you talk of angelic beings, he would be on the parallel with Michael and Gabriel, but in a fallen state from the Lord. All right, now let's just talk about angels in general. I'm excited about this because I, I know that you have guardian angels and that excites me. So I know that when we are going through things in our lives, you may, not, you may tune me out today and not hear what I'm preaching, but the angels are there working in, on your behalf to serve you and minister to you and deliver that message to your heart because you're here today. And I know the Holy Spirit is too. So together, that's a mighty force, amen? That God and all his angels, he's divided, he's divinely intended them to protect you. He's divinely intended them to be messengers to you. He has di divinely intended them to serve you and minister to your needs. He's divinely encountered them and created them to be warriors on your behalf. He's created them to be harvesters in the end times of all the souls. And he has intended them to constantly worship him 24 seven day and night. They do not have harps. They do not eat bonbons. They do not sit on clouds. All right, the cartoons in Hollywood have put that in your head. These guys are some cool dudes. They are created beings for our behalf. Now they're not the same as us. We're gonna learn when we get to Hebrews, they are not created in the image of God. They do not have all the things that we have. They don't have souls like we are. They're not, they're not redeemed. They are who they are and they have been set before God forever as angelic beings. We're gonna hang out in heaven with them forever. But they are, they are not above us. God created us in his image, they are not. So there's some distinctions when we go through and we look at this. But the first one I look at is Hebrews 1.14. Are they not all ministering spirits, angels, that are sent out to serve those who are going to inherit salvation? So if you're wondering, where do I get this guardian angel thing from? Hebrews is filled with stuff like this in chapter one and two, which we're gonna read in full at the very end. But when we look at this, there are ministering angels that have been sent to minister to you. So if you're a Christian, I'm not gonna ask you to raise your hand, but if you're a believer in Jesus Christ on this side, in the middle and on the end, and if you're watching me, and you have Jesus in your life, or if you don't have Jesus, but God is preordained, he knows you're gonna get saved because of his foreknowledge. See, God knows the beginning from the end, you all. He's not only sovereign, he didn't line us up and pick us, I do not believe that at all, but I know that he knows your free choice and your free will, and he knows that he gave the gospel, and he knows whether you're gonna receive it or not. And if you're gonna receive it, you're gonna inherit salvation, he's assigned, notice plural, he's assigned ministering angels, spirits, to you and to me. So if you're saved, you do have guardian angels. 
And if you're gonna be saved, you might be in here today and say, I'm not saved. Well, guess what? He knows that, and there are angels already assigned to you too, whether you like it or not. Amen? So when you were a heathen back in your day, there were angels trying to keep you from drinking that beer and going out and doing things you shouldn't have done. Amen? I go out and be doing stupid things that you shouldn't have been doing in your teenage years, and maybe even until your adult years. They're there trying to make sure that you're doing the right things, and they're a part of your life. They've been assigned to you. I think that's pretty cool. I think that's awesome, actually. And now, should you talk to them? No, I guess they could hear you, but you don't pray to them. But they're there. You pray to God. You pray to God for these angels to minister to you. Look here in Psalm 91, 11. He will give his angels orders concerning you to protect you in all of your ways. So one of the angels protect you. What are they protecting you from? The powers of darkness. They may be protecting you in this life if this temporal world comes at you and it's not your time to go. God can do supernatural things. And let me give you an example. I know my son's gonna be scarred from this. So I have had two encounters that I know I had with an angel and they both revolve around Samuel. So I'm gonna share both of them today with you. And when I say this, I have no doubt, Holy Ghost goosebumps, I may not have physically seen, one of them I physically saw. The other one I'm gonna tell you now, I didn't see, but I know my son saw. So when my son, we, just, we lived in New Orleans and we're at seminary and Shawnetta would walk around with another family and, and, and their children and they, she would stroll the kids around the neighborhood at, at seminary. And Samuel actually died, you all. She had to do CPR on him and I think he was around two and he turned blue and I'm in this conference it called Faith Clinic. I was learning how to share the gospel, go out on the streets of New Orleans, and I was actually being prepared to be the minister of evangelism in First Baptist New Orleans. I was in the, in the Martin Chapel with about 300 different students. And I'll never forget this. This lady from the dean's office, a fellow student, walked in and asked the professor, I need to see Chris McCombs. And they called my name out in front of all 300 people. I walked to the back and I see her face, and I don't know what it was, I just said, is my son okay? And her head dropped. I knew then, oh no, you know what's going on. I run out the door, and there's a lady that worked, uh, the, the groundskeeper there on campus, she was waiting on, in her truck for me to get in her truck, and she drove me down to where we lived on campus. And the ambulance was there, and Sa Shawnetta was there, and Samuel was already buckled up in there, and I just jumped out and got into the ambulance. And back at that day, Samuel's not as excited to see me when I come home now, but when he was two, he was very excited to see me when I came home. And then when daddy was home, and he looked at me, and then he kept looking back this other direction. And I would keep calling his name out. This is the whole why we were driving. And he would look at me, but then he would look back. And I'm telling you now, he was looking at something. He was looking at someone. And in all of my heart, I'm telling you, it was the angels that had been assigned to him. And that day, they, they saved him. Of course, Shawnetta, I believe the angels were watching over her because she had no idea how to do a CPR on a two-year-old. You know, imagine you seeing your baby boy blue. And, and we get him, and he, he's okay, and then we leave the hospital, and then I was finished in the clinic, and listen to what happened. We really believe there's a divine appointment for me that night, that I needed to go out on the streets of New Orleans and share the gospel. Normally, I would have stayed home, but I asked Shawnetta, should I go? And she said, yes, and I went. Guys, this gets good. So I go and we go out there, and it's so disappointing. I don't get, I share the gospel, but nobody gets saved. I'm thinking, man, I should have been home with Samuel. And then we get back in, in the van, and we pick up some other people that were on, that were doing some other ministry in different areas of New Orleans, and they get in the van with us, and we start going back. And in the back seat, I don't remember this guy's name, but in the back seat, we were all talking about what happened, and, and I, I said, I thought there was gonna be a divine appointment. And this guy didn't know me. When he heard that I was Samuel's dad, he says, your divine appointment wasn't them. Your divine appointment was to meet me. I'm the one that when you left, the professor called all of us together and they said, would someone come up here and take the place of Samuel? And this one guy came up front and they all, 300 students, surrounded him and prayed over him like he was Samuel. Would you know that at the very moment the angels were ministering to Samuel and as he went to the hospital and we found he was healed, that was when they were praying for 30 minutes over him. I believe those prayers moved heaven into action. I believe those prayers that day brought his angels to be revealed to Samuel. 
He won't remember it, but I'm going to tell you to, as his dad, I'll never forget that day. So we got another one I'm going to get in. I know I'm going to scar him. He's going to talk to me afterwards. It's okay. Because those angels are protecting over him and me too. Amen. So let's look at some other things. Matthew 4, 11. Then the devil left him and the angels came and began to serve him. This is Jesus. So Jesus is in the wilderness. He's been tempted by Satan. He's 40 days without food and water. And then what happens? The angels come, his angels come and do what? Minister to Jesus. Would they not also minister to us? They serve us. Now they physically served him. And by the way, the Bible goes on to tell us also in Hebrews 13, 12, 2, don't neglect to show hospitality for in doing so, you welcome angels as guests without knowing it. You and I have entertained angels. You and I have entertained angels. You may never have known it. So let me give you another story that I have. Um, most of you by now probably have heard that we lost a child at birth, Victoria, when we were at Yokota Air Force Base. So I don't have three kids, we have four kids that were born. Victoria was redhead too, by the way. And that was really the pivotal moment where we came to know that I needed to be called to be a pastor. Shawnetta can tell the story much better. We were sitting at the end of the bed and I knew in my career, I was like, hey, I'm, I'm set to be a staff officer the rest of my career now. I'm not gonna be around soldiers. I'm not gonna impact lives like I, I was as a platoon leader and a company commander. And, and so we need to go make a place where we make differences in people's lives, and that was the ministry. And so then Samuel was born a year and a half later. Same place, same people. The whole family uh, of Camp Zama came around us and supported us, but they were so afraid that they would have a repeat of what happened with Victoria, they admitted shall not an entire week in the hospital before Samuel would be born. And he was breached. Anything that could go wrong with a pregnancy, Samuel did it. <laughs> it was just not going well for Shawnetta. They tried to push him around so he'd come out normal. And so then it was Christmas Day. And they're like, hey, we're gonna do a C-section. We're, we're gonna induce you and we're gonna do the delivery and everything will go smooth the next day. They forgot about us. They got so busy. Everybody was given birth on that day besides Jesus on Christmas Day of that year. <laughs> And they all come in the Yokota Air Force Base and then Samuel is coming out. His feet are coming out. He's an airborne trooper, I'm telling you, man. <laughs> he was coming. And Shauna's like, I'm gonna kill him. They're saying, don't push. And she's like, I gotta push. And this becomes this crazy emergency. And again, everything goes wrong. So here I am. I lost my daughter a year and a half ago. And they will my wife around, away. And they will my son out. And I have no idea what's gonna happen. I crawl up in a ball and sit next to the elevator. There's one elevator door to the maternity ward at Yokota Air Force Base. And there's one desk that's right there and the nurse sits there constantly. I want y'all to hear what happened. I'm sitting there, I'm by myself. I'm praying to God, I don't know what's happening. I can't be back there. So I don't know if he's okay, I don't know if she's okay. No one's given me any reports. And I'm crawling up and I'm crying. I hate to confess, but I cry if you didn't know that. And somebody gets off the elevator and touches my shoulder and says these words, it's all gonna be okay. I just saw their feet and it looked like they had like combat boots on. And then they walked past. And then I looked up and they were gone. And I asked the nurse, who got off the elevator? She said, nobody got off the elevator. The elevator's still on floor one. Do y'all just hear what I'm saying? I believe to this day, God sent that angel to tell me Samuel would be okay and Shalnetta would be okay. In all of my life, that's the only time. I never saw their face. I just remember seeing their feet and then looking up and they were gone. I believe to this day that was an angel. Now, I'm not saying that to say I'm better than you. You may have seen angels and you didn't even realize it. Maybe God blessed me in a moment to realize his angelic beings were there. And, and by the way, that never happened with Macy or Savannah. That doesn't mean they're not as good as Samuel. Samuel just needed extra help, amen? <laughs> so we all need that, right? We need these ministering angels. And listen to Romans 8, 38. Paul's persuaded nothing, nothing, not even death or life or angels or rulers or things present or things to come or powers or anything can separate us from what? Love of God in Christ Jesus. Nothing, not even angels can do that. Revelation 5.11, then I looked and heard a voice of many angels around the throne 
and this living creatures and the elders and the number was countless thousands plus thousands of thousands. This is why I'm telling you, you can't count angels. We don't know. I don't even know how to add that up, do you? Countless thousands plus thousands and thousands more. That's a lot of angels, you all. Revelation 7 11. 7 11? Yeah. <laughs> all the angels stood around the throne and along with the elders and the four living creatures, and they fell face down before the throne and worshiped God. So the next time you pass the 7 Eleven, I want you to think of that. That all the angels are falling face down before the throne of God, worshiping Him. And that leads us up to this last section. I want to read actually Hebrews 1 and 2, and I just want you to listen. I'm not gonna preach on it, so if you're like, oh my gosh, it's already 20 after and he's gonna preach on this whole two chapters of Hebrews. I just wanna read it. I just want you to listen to it. Because it's probably the two most prolific chapters of scripture that distinguish who we are, distinguish who Jesus is, and distinguish who the angels are. Because all of Hebrews is establishing Jesus as what? Our high priest. They're reminding us of who Jesus is. In these first two chapters, they tell us who we are, who the angels are, and who Jesus is. Chapter one. Long ago, God spoke to our ancestors by the prophets at different times and in different ways. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by his son. God has appointed him heir of all things. He made the universe through him. The son is the radiance of God's glory, the exact expression of his nature, sustaining all things by his powerful word. After making purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. So he became superior to the angels, just as the name he inherited is more excellent than theirs. For to which of the angels did he ever say, you are my son, or today I have become your father, or again, I will be his father and he will be my son. Again, when he brings the firstborn into the world, he says, and let all God's angels worship him. And about the angels, he says, he makes his angels winds and his servants a fiery flame. But to the sun, your throne, God, is forever and ever. And the scepter of your kingdom is the scepter of justice. You have loved righteousness and hated lawlessness. This is why God, your God, has anointed you with the oil of joy beyond your companions. And in the beginning, Lord, you established the earth and the heavens. They're the works of your hands. They will perish, but you remain. They will all wear out like clothing. You will roll them up like a cloak. They will be changed like clothing, but you are the same, and your years will never end. Now to which of the angels has he ever said, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool? Are they not all ministering spirits? sent out to serve those who are going to inherit salvation, chapter two. For this reason, we must pay attention to all the more to what we have heard, so that we may not drift away. For if the messenger spoke through angels, was legally binding, and every transgression, transgression and disobedience received a just punishment, how will we escape if we neglect such a great salvation? This salvation had its beginning when it was spoken to us by the Lord and it was confirmed to us by those who heard him. At the same time, God also testified by signs and wonders and various miracles and distributions of gifts by the Holy Spirit according to his will. For he was not subjected to the angels, the world to come and those things that are talking about. But someone somewhere has testified. What is man that you remember him? or son of man, that you care for him. You made him lower than the angels for a short time. You crowned him with glory and honor, and you have subjected everything under his feet. For in subjecting everything to him, he left nothing that is not subject to him. As it is, we do not yet see everything subjected to him, but we do see Jesus, made lower than the angels for a short time, so that by God's grace, he might taste death for every one. Crowned him with glory and honor, because he suffered death. For in bringing many sons and daughters to glory, it is entirely appropriate that God, by whom through whom all things exist, should make the pioneer of their salvation perfect through sufferings. 
For the one who sanctifies and those who are sanctified all have one Father. That is why Jesus is not ashamed to call them brothers and sisters, saying, I will proclaim your name to my brothers and sisters. I will sing hymns to you in the congregation. Again, I will trust in him. And again, here I am with the children God gave me. Now, since the children have flesh and blood in common, Jesus also shared in these, so that through his death, he might destroy the one holding the power of death, that is the devil, and free those who held in slavery all their lives by the fear of death. For it is clear that he does not reach out to help angels, but to help Abraham's offspring. Therefore, he has to be like his brothers and sisters in every way, so that he could become the merciful and faithful high priest in the matters pertaining to God, to make atonement for the sins of the people. For since he himself has suffered, when he was tempted, he was also now able to help those who are tempted. May God add a blessing to his holy word. This is Jesus. He is our high priest. He took on flesh and dwelt among us so he could be among us. And I want to focus just on one verse, or, or really two, but over towards the end when you get to verse 14. He came to die so that he would destroy the power of death, which comes from Satan. Jesus conquered death. You do not have to fear death. I think some of you do. We do not fear death. Jesus has conquered death. Jesus has given us life. The one that holds us in fear to that is the devil. And look, it says that we have been freed from the slavery, from the fear of death. And then he goes on. He has not come in verse 16. He did not come to reach out to the angels. The angels already know they're in heaven. He did not come to reach them. He came to minister to Abraham's offspring. Who is Abraham's offspring? You and me. You and me. He took on flesh so he could be our brother. He took on flesh, he is our Lord. He took on flesh so he could be our savior. He is our brother, he is our savior, he is our Lord. Amen? Amen. That is Jesus. He's greater than the angels, but he lowered himself even to our standard and even beneath the angels so that he could die for you and me. What a savior. What a God. What a masterful plan that God would orchestrate all this stuff for us. Wow. Does God hold you in high regard? You bet. Does he love you? You bet. Did he go to the extents of even lowering himself and humbling himself to take on flesh? He did. And that's what Christmas is all about. Reminding us of those things. Today, I don't want you to fall before an angel. I want you to fall about, uh, before Jesus. I want you to know who is the God, the one who created the universe, the one that created the heavens and the earth. All the things that just said, Jesus was there. The one who came to become your brother. The one who came to be your savior. And if you don't know Jesus, today you can. And by the way, a bonus, you get some angels to join you too. But your name can be written in the Lamb's book of life. And so today, if you don't know Jesus, I want to invite you to know Jesus. If you've not been baptized, I want to invite you. And I pray, I pray that the angels will push you out of your seat. Amen. And if you need to join this church and you haven't, I'm asking those angels to kick you in the butt. <laughs> and get you up here and say, I want to be part of this family of God. And then to the other ones, if something's not right in your life, and you, you've been fading away from God, Jesus has given the angels there to kick you in the butt too. And may they do a good job today. May the Holy Spirit be enticing you and pulling you as well so that you can come and be right with God. Let's pray. Father, Lord, God, Almighty One, creator of heaven and earth, the one true God, the great I Am, we come to you. Lord, I thank you in your masterful plan, how you created the heavens and the earth. I thank you that we have a heaven that awaits us and we have a new heaven and a new earth and a new Jerusalem that is yet to come. I am so grateful that Jesus, you said you're going to prepare a place for us. I'm so grateful that you have sent your Holy Spirit that ministers to us even now. And I'm so grateful, God, for all of us that will inherit salvation, that you have given angels to help us to to worship, to receive messages, to minister, 
to even harvest in our lives the things that are of you. God, may you right now do something only you can. May the throne room of heaven be moved in action as we have worshiped you and the angels worship you. As we receive the word of the Lord today and we've heard your truths, may they move in our hearts in such a way that we respond to you, the one true God. I pray this in Jesus' name and all of God's people said, amen. Let's stand and sing. You come as the Lord leads you. Christmas, didn't you? Hey, how do we spread Christmas cheer? We sing loud for all to hear. You guys did a great job. Have you be seated for just a moment. You all thought that was Buddy the Elf. No, that's Chris. All right, so let me have Tori come up here first. So this is Tori Close, everybody. Hi, Tori. All right, and uh, she has shared her journey with me. And that's her story between her and me, but it's taken a lot to get you here. And I'm glad that you found your way here, and uh, the Lord's moving in her life, and a lot of good things are happening. And I just uh, want to encourage you to minister to her and love on her, 
in her journey, and she has received Christ and has been baptized, and she's kind of returning to the church after years of being away. Amen. Yes. Amen. So for all of us that receive her out of her free will to join our church and be part of our family of God, say amen. 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 You're stuck with us now. Have you sit down for a minute. All right, Vince, you come up. Megan, you keep writing. This is Vince. He's a Marine, but that's okay. Hoorah. Yeah. So, uh, so uh, been ministering to Vince and Megan for a while now, but I know Vince back from years ago before COVID. Yeah. And so he's been really moving his life trying to get it right with the Lord. And, um, and I just want to continue to encourage you in that. Surround yourself by godly people, and the Lord will set you up for success, man. All right? And uh, so he has already received Christ. He was baptized earlier in his life, and he just wants to rededicate himself and join the church today. For all of us that want to receive him into that, say amen. 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 God bless you. Sit down. Megan, come on up here. Even though Megan's from Virginia Tech. Oh, where did my VTP? Oh, they left. Oh, man. Okay. You had some cheerleaders in here with, yeah, but they've gone. So Megan has come. She loves the church. She has Jesus in her life, but she's never been baptized. So she came up and says, I have to be baptized. I said, wait, 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 wait. You have to or you want to? And she goes, no, I want to. So may this be an example to everyone again. I know some of us struggle when we come from other denominations that may not do immersion baptism. Maybe you were sprinkled as a baby. Um, she didn't know I was going to put her on the spot like this, but maybe that's in your background, right? And it's okay. They taught you Jesus, love Jesus, and that's a great thing. But when you come here, baptism's part of what we do to be an outward sign that you've given your life to Jesus. So I want to encourage you, don't, don't be afraid of that. I know I see some other people, Jill and Jill, you all both done it, so you're not alone. A lot of people have done that. So encourage you, if you're out there and you've not done that, and Becky doesn't want me to pick on her, I know Becky's here too somewhere, yeah. So there's a lot of people that that's been their story. And guess what? God is in your story. And whether it's 20 years ago you got saved and you get baptized now, that's a beautiful thing, amen? So I want to encourage you, if you've never been baptized, follow examples like Megan and those others I just named and, and follow through and get a believer's baptism. So Megan, uh, we're going to present you now to the church. All those that want and accept G her decision in Christ and to be baptized and bring it to the family of God, say amen. 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 Have you sit down up here. What an exciting, exciting day. Yeah, you're stuck with us now. So as we leave today, I just want to remind us of the events. Is Gap meeting tonight? Yes. Yeah, at Panera? Yes. Gap at Panera. Uh, youth are at my, my place. Handbells are meeting tonight uh, or this afternoon. And so all the normal events are going on today. Um, so be a part of those things as well. Uh, come up here and hug their necks. Be careful. Linda will get you if you knock a bell off. All right? And I've learned you don't mess with Linda Lamb. All right? <laughs> So anyway, uh, come up here, though, hug their necks, let them know, and they're grateful to have them to part, be a part of the family of God. Go have a great day. Listen in a blessing. May the Lord God bless you and keep you. May he cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May he lift his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Go in Jesus' name. Amen.